When T-Mobile says we've got you covered, we mean it. We've invested billions to light up our best network yet, covering 99% of people in America. And great coverage is just the beginning. Every year, families and small businesses can save up to 900 bucks versus Verizon when they switch to T-Mobile. There's never been a better time to switch. Visit your local T-Mobile store and switch today. Coverage is not available in some areas. Savings with four lines based on analysis of Verizon and T-Mobile national postpaid smartphone bills, rate plan features, taxes and fees and savings may vary. See details at T-Mobile.com. Time now for the Bradfoe Show with Rob Bradford. With Rob Bradford on WEEI. WEEI. And streaming everywhere on the Odyssey app. This magic moment So different and so new Was like any other there is, this is a matching moment. Though. This is exactly what I think of when I think of the Little League World Series. It is? No. Oh, this is your walk-up music? <laughs> what would your walk-up music be? Uh, I don't know. Let no? me... What's it, what you got? I, you got something lock and loaded. What do you got? I think I would do Led Zeppelin. Okay. I think it would have to be when the levee breaks. I feel like that's like a cliche Led Zeppelin song, but it Can just Can we gets... find that, Jackson? Can we find that? Do you can, do you know that off the, the no, top of the head? Don't. You no. don't. Oh, no. incredible building! There we go. But this is also it like, is. could He's be a bullpen up. song. That's a good. I like that. I'm surprised Bobby Dahlbeck hasn't done this yet. Bobby Dahlbeck is like a big, big like late '60s, early '70s rock. I like that. Guy. So, what? Uh, I don't know if I've talked to you about this before, about the MLBs. Gallows Pole, that would be an awesome bullpen song. What, Jackson, just, Jackson, Jackson, what, I know what, would Jackson, agree with what that would be one. your walk in music? What would be your walk up song? If you had, what would it be? Probably something real heavy. Probably like Metallica or Pantera. Like or, Ride the Lightning? Maybe Ride the Lightning. All right, I, I, I can't Was Levy that. Break too soft for you? Uh, it's too over. I mean, I, I was. It's overplayed. I played it. I worked yeah. at a classic rock station for 10 years, so I've heard that song way too many times. All right. I feel that. Well, so in case people don't know, one of the stupidest things that Major League Baseball ever tried doing was initially, by the way, this is the Bradford Show. I'm Rob Bradford. That's Coop. That's Jackson. Uh, 617-779-7937. Then we'll get to the Little League Hour in a second. But. You know, one of the dumbest things they did, I remember this like it was yesterday. We had Joe Garagiola Jr. up in the spring training press box in the in the broadcast booth with Joe, and they were just starting to try to say, oh, you know, we want to speed the game up. So we're doing a few things here and there. And Joe Garagiola, Joe Garagiola Jr. says, yeah, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to limit walk-up music to 15 seconds. And I'm looking at him like, what? Like, first of all, like, how does that do anything? But this was Coop. This was the first idea that they had to keep the game to Big speed brain. it up. Big brain stuff. I mean, and and so immediately we run down to Shane Victorino, who does the Three Little Birds, and he was like one of the guys who had known for this. Oh. Talk about an iconic World Series. Excellent moment. job, Jets. Yeah, when you had the whole. But so this was it. his walk. Yeah, exactly. So they. This wanted- was the best one because it got the crowd to sing yeah. along here. Right. Yeah. And so think about this: thirty-seven thousand people so, screaming the so same time. So they're time. cutting this off at fifteen seconds because oh, we got to speed up the game. Their whole thinking was that these guys are taking their time walking up to the plate, which I think Matt Kemp was the guy who was taking forever to do this. But like, holy mackerel! This is to your point, Jackson. To everybody's understanding. This was a good thing. Like we want, like it gets the engagement exactly. Like it, you look at football. Football runs the same amount of time as baseball does. You can look at it every year. They compete for longest running like professional sport within the U.S. Like they they both hover around that three hours fifteen minute mark. It's not a it's not an issue with football of being too slow. It's the pace, right? It's the pace. It's the pace. Football, you're always going. With baseball, you have that one little moment where people are walking up. But people are paying to it, pay, at least when you're there at the game, and that's the thing. It doesn't translate well to TV, which football's a better TV sport. But it translate well translates well in person. It's the moments in between each pitches right. that you have to cancel on. So, and that's what they're doing in the minors, doing a great job. Yeah, so it's you're absolutely right. It's not like the carving off nine minutes. It's the pace. It's the pace. And everyone knows it's the pitch clock. Everyone understands that. But for them, this and this is going back. Obviously, like this isn't a thing anymore. But to th- for them to think this is let's make is, it a thing. It's, cr- it's crazy. You, me and you, me and you, Rob. Let's make it a thing. I mean, we have to cut cut every walk in music 
Cut it up. Imagine Papelbon. Papelbon running you in. Lose out Edwin Diaz. Cut the trumpets, Edwin Diaz. It's been 15 seconds. Awful. Um, right. Anyway. I was about to say, this is the Little League. This is the Little League. Uh, yeah, hour. I know. I was going to get to that. All right. All right. This is the Little League. I know you're very excited. Well, we get on league. tangents. Uh, we get on no, tangents. No, no. I'm always going to bring it back. All right. This is the Little League hour. As we said before, the Red Sox are down in Williamsport. It looks like they're going to play the game. The skies are clearing. That's good news. We have... All the pomp and circumstance that is Williamsport. You can hear the pregame show while Will Fleming check in, while Ian Brown boots in the ground downtown. Ian Brown check in from Williamsport. I'm excited about this whole thing. But I'm also excited about this hour because this has been – I've had a lot of fun doing the show. I'm not just saying that. That We've had. We've talked a lot about – we've had somebody who – it was great talking about uh, Christian Arroyo – uh, excellent job uh, from perfect game. Give us insight in terms of the guy that really is sort of, I think, one of the hot button topics of the Red Sox. That was in the first hour. We had um, Chris Hatfield. Thanks so much for a full hour talking about Red Sox prospects. Man of the people. Uh, giving us the, the, the what's what when it comes to these guys, which I think right now, honestly, Coop, this is they're probably more popular than the guy. Actually After that playing. whole conversation. Yeah. Who, who do you think is like the best guy for this organization right now? What do you mean? It's for, like mean. everyone that he talks about. If every prospect that he talked about, oh, mostly, what got you the most excited? Well, I know that he's super excited about Miguel Blaze. I'm not talking about. I'm not talking about Chris. I love Chris. He's a great oh. guy. I'm talking about no, you. No, I, I want to see Miguel Blaze because I'm, he's still your one one of yeah, one. Yeah, because like when you have you have a guy like that who's an outfielder. You need a star outfielder. Like, you know what's crazy? And again, we're we're gonna get back to Little League Hour in a second. <laughs> but what's crazy about the Red Sox team going forward? Is that their outfield is like the sad trombone of yeah. all outfields? Which when it was the killer bees, right? Well, that's the point. Is that we juxtapose it against that, and the free agency class sucks. Like in the outfield, I mean, it it does. We went did that. Exercise. Jock Peterson was one of the names. Oh, I named it's last it's week. it's crazy bad, right? It's Aaron Judge and then everybody else, and you know, and with all due respect, is Tommy Aaron Judge fan, bad for free agency? Why? I don't. I just wanted to throw his hot six takes there. Seven, 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 seven. <laughs> uh, but but it, it is with Tommy Pham coming. You know, fine. Like, but that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about who are going to be the next good outfielder. And this guy Miguel Blaze is a ways off. Listen, he's eighteen years old. But that idea of him gets me going. Here. All right, all right. So little league hour. So Williamsport, we're going to have Ian Brown, Will Fleming check in. Give us every every. I've never been more excited for a pregame show in my life. But this also opens the door for the opportunity for everybody to talk about Little League Baseball. Coaches, players, parents, everybody. This is, this is what it's all about. The story is about Coop. Cooper Leonard gets up there. Back Government up. name? My ba- goodness. Back up. Back up. People only know me ba- by Coop Leon. Back up. Cooper Leonard's <laughs> up. Back up. I used, I, I, I used to get that. Yeah, I know. I was a decent no, ball player, was, and, and then and then it and got the serious. Kid, and it, I got a feeling. Sixty feet went to ninety feet. That, is it still like? And people who call in about Little League can tell me this. Is it the poor kid? Like stick him in right field. Is right field still like? That's the, such, Siberia? I remember that was such an odd concept to me that you eventually learned that like the right fielder is often the best. Well, what's outfielder. weird is like, what, like yeah. What's really weird, weird is in Major League Baseball he's the best yeah. outfielder, right? Yeah. Like you want him to have the best arm. Meanwhile, you're sticking like I don't know Joey Joey Mahoney out there, and <laughs> he can barely get it to second base. So you never played right field? No, I was a shortstop. You were the guy. You were I the shortstop the pitcher. Guy. You were the shortstop pitcher. I mean, during the Pedroia interview, I told you like I wanted to be like him. I wanted to grind right. it out. Like I him. see everybody. I, this is I, this makes my heart feel good. I said, if you have a soul, if you have a soul, you should be calling in right now six one seven 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 nine seven nine three seven because this is your one chance to talk about little league baseball, anything to do with it. A great story, where it's going, because I do want to talk about that too. As I said, having done this book project, it really is. There's a lot of good and bad where little league baseball is going. And and how it's being treated, and we see the coaches. We see the different. This is the time of year where we get to see the coaches mic'd up at the little league, little league World Series. All of it, and it can get. I've I've got some takes for you on that. I good. I want your takes. All right, six one seven 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 nine seven nine three seven. I see you all lined up. The Bradford Show on W E E I Boston Sports Original.
All right, welcome back to the Bradford Show. I'm Rob Bradford along with Coop. We've got a ton of calls to get to, and that makes me, honestly, Coop, it makes me feel People good. People are feeling nostalgic. It, it, it makes me feel good. The Red Sox are playing in Williamsport tonight. Uh, we've seen videos coming from there. Uh, players sliding down hills, hitting out ice cream bars. It's This is good. It's, it takes a break from the season to sort of regroup and say, hey, you know what? I don't know if you know this, Coop. Baseball isn't boring. Uh, you're kidding. At BB isn't boring. At BB isn't At boring. BB Go ahead, follow boring. on Instagram right. and or Twitter. All right. Uh, we're going we're gonna to regale you with our, our experiences in Little League as we go along. But we got to get to all these calls because the phone lines are absolutely lit up. We appreciate everyone calling in. If you can't get through quite yet, someone drops off, please keep trying. I want you to have the opportunity to talk about Little League. Important conversation. And it's the only one time you're going to get a chance to do this. On the one hour of the year, and we've already gonna... chewed away at half of All right, it. I just go. Al in West Roxbury. Hey, Al, how are you today? Oh, good. How are you? Good, thanks. Good. Okay, I'm going to quickly tell you about the legendary hip play Ooh. from 1977. Ooh. People forget. And they actually they implemented a new rule because of this. So I'm 12 years old in this same Little League All-Star Tournament, and it's the district finals. I'm, I'm playing for West Roxbury Parkway Little League against Norwood. And it was literally a David and Goliath because Norwood was destroying teams like 21 to 1, 19 to nothing. And we were like a small little scrappy team. There you go. Glue guys. So, so anyway, we're playing down at Prot Field near Catholic Memorial. And there's like 500 people there, reporters. So Norwood's like, okay, so who are we playing after we beat West Roxbury? Okay. So anyway, in the top of the first, we got up 3 nothing, And then this kid from Norwood, he's like 220 pounds. I'm like 80 12 years old and he's 220 pounds? Don't, don't derail No, I, like, I love this. All I'm right, so go, into it. Go ahead. I'm not kidding you. So... Um, I'm the pitcher. Um, I'm a dirt dog, so I, I'll, I led the league in hitting kids and subsequently getting hit. Heck yeah, brother. But anyway, so there's two guys on, and he hits the ball over the train tracks. The fence is 200 feet. He hits it 350 feet, okay? All right, fast forward, top of the six. There's only six innings, obviously. I get a double, and then I get to third on a pass ball. There's two out, and I said, I'm going for it. I'm stealing Full home. Full There you and go. And I used to like copying Pete Rose doing the heads for, head for us slides. Yep. So Great so guy. my coach doesn't give me the sign. I do a straight steal of home, slide in head first, just make it. We go up four to three. Let's go. Okay. We got to get six. to the, Al, we got a lot of people. On, we got to get to the hip play. All right. Okay, bottom of the six, bases loaded, one out. The same 220-pound kid comes up. I throw him a fastball down the middle. He hits it right back at me as hard as he hit the 350-foot one. A lot of momentum hits behind my that. Hip, hits my hip, goes 60 feet up in the air. Our third baseman catches it for out two. Tags third because the kid on third had ran home. Game over. Wow. What? That that's yep. cra- that's crazy. What year was that? Nineteen seventy-seven. There we go. They didn't See, have they didn't have the Amazon Al, analytics. Al, then. thanks for the call. L- listen, th- that's what we're talking about. Right? I wish. So you know how like they have the Amazon analytics things like tracking every like the sensors tracking every like where yeah. the ball goes and everything. Yes, they should have had it back in the nineteen seventies. I don't know what Jeff Bezos was on, but he should have got his act together faster. So we could actually see if that ball went 60 feet well, in the air. I mean, that's the great thing, is that he remembers that. What did he say, 1972, whatever it was? 70-something. Whatever. But it was like that's the fact that, that he remembers that hip play, like that's what it's all about. It's all and about. I got a Creating feeling that, that that story has been told numerous times at numerous restaurants and bars. I guarantee you it went from 20 feet into the air to 30 feet into uh, the air. Ah, uh, It's so good. So it's good. Like all fish. right, let's go to Chris and Lynn. Hey, Chris, how you doing? First time caller on any radio show. There you oh, go. Welcome, All right. Guys. <laughs> Just wanted to talk about my, my son Jay uh, here in Little League. Um, he's somewhat autistic. He has a little bit of a problem. Um, he was the last kid picked for the majors, and they kind of did it, I think, as a favor because his sister had been really good. Um, and the, he liked to pitch, and I kept telling him, like, can you guys just like – I know he's, uh, they've got all the 12-year-olds pitching – but he, I used to catch him, and it used to hurt because he threw so hard. He's like ten years old, just a little, little, little pipsqueak. And um, 
they had a big game, and they decided to see what he could do. And one coach is going, well, he's so small, he's so small. Well, they brought him in. He strikes out this big kid, ends up getting a hit, scoring a run, knocking in a run, and his confidence level just went right through the roof. And, Pedro-esque. You know, to me, that's kind of what Little League is about. You know, that's that's what it should be about, you know? Oh, it totally is. Give the little guys a chance. Chris, That's an, I really appreciate you sharing that, and thanks for the call, and please call back at another time. Um, but, you know, that is what it's all about. The fact is, is that, and that's what I think some coaches don't get. A lot, of, Most of them do. But... It, I it, do my best at it. Well, it's about it, it, a, a, one word of encouragement goes so far. A one moment of encouragement, as we just saw, right? Yeah. I mean, this is a lifetime sort of thing. Now, wait, did you ever, because you, you grew up in di- a very different time than I did. Not uh, that <laughs> Were your coaches, do you think, like a lot more tougher than... Yeah, I think know, that. What, what yeah, I, I think that generation probably. It's it's. I mean, it's all it all varies. You have yeah. some coaches, and then I see this in AAU basketball a lot too, where this is like, this is like this is their thing. Like they're staying, they're sitting in their cubicle. I was going to say they're nine to five. Like all they're thinking right. about and, is and just then, like the trap, then, the trap then, defense that they're going to run. Yeah, on Rob and, and then they're like when the kid like gives up the big hit or walks the hit or whatever it is. They're all over them because you know that's that, that ruined their plans, and that's unavoidable. That's that happens in little league, happens in AU. It's unfortunate, but it, that happens. I mean, unfortunate is like being a parent. You can't vet who's being a parent. You can only vet who's the coach so much. And if uh, you know, maybe they only last a year, but it's going to be a bad year. Unfortunately, I've been on those. I've I've fortunately I've never been on a team where like a guy's yelling at me the entire time. But I've been on a team where, like, two college kids coached, which this is just going to be, like, that, blowing up that, in my that, face because this is where I was. But, like, those guys, they knew they knew how to coach, and they, were, they played at UMass. They were smart with baseball, but they didn't know how to but deal it, with kids. But it's not only that. It's about their own selfishness, yes. right? It's it, not, no, it was It's, it's like, this is my opportunity to win games, to be a coach, and so forth and so on. We get, still get a ton of calls uh, lined up here to talk Little League in this Little League hour leading up to the Red Sox playing Williamsport, of course, the pregame show. 617-779-7937 if you want to try to squeeze in. Let's go to Michael in Middlebury, Middlebury Vermont. Hey, Michael, how are yeah. you? Hey, Brad Poe, great. Yeah, I wanted to, I'm going back to 1971. Uh, uh, Old Orchard Beach, Greg Hills adopted Maine hometown, <laughs> and we uh, co-opted with the uh, Outremont, um, Montreal Outremont. It's a mm-hmm. Canadian team. They come down here. We'd go up there. So my first experience was as a player. We went up there, and it was great. But I noticed the coaches the next day, and then I heard about this St. Catherine Street. So now I understand what St. Catherine Street was all about. <laughs> and then uh, I went as a uh, as a coach. And this was nuts, too. I went to coach as next two years, and I told the guy, we've got to go to Mount Royal Stadium. The first stadium was Jerry Park. Now we had to go to Mount Royal Stadium. He took me up to the top of Mount Royal, and we had to get back down. My fine young Jamaican uh, cabbie was driving on the side sidewalks and uh he got me there but oh yeah it was quite a quite an quite an excursion all right thanks for the call michael uh, that, that that there was a lot going on there was there. A lot, i i, I like the premise of like an exchange program i feel like i i want to take something out of every one of these calls as a as a life lesson i don't know I mean, what getting I don't down know what from the thinking. mountain is getting getting to the top of the mountain is one thing, but you have to get down from the the, the top of the mountain, Coop. You're gonna stitch that on a pillow because I, I don't I, think you have I, real estate. I don't know. For Let's that. go to Mike and Medway. Hey, Mike, how you doing? Good. How you guys doing? Oh, awesome. terrific. Awesome. Well, I just got a fun little league story. Uh, it was my first year at Kid Pitch uh, back in Denver. Uh, so there I was in the bottom of the ninth, two outs, down one. The kind wait, of wait, wait. Is this the about. Mike? Yes, Cooper. How are you, sir? Oh, you let, should have started let, with this let, is let Mike Mike, Mullen. This is Mike Mike's talk. a good guy. This is, yeah, okay, super. All right, I apologize, like Mike. Mike. Talk. He don't, said don't Denver, and that was moment. a cue for Go me. ahead, Mike. <laughs> no one likes Denver. But no, I was... Sir. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, back bottom of the ninth, two outs, down one, kind of stuff you dream about in your back, backyard. I have my trusty power cell bat in my hands. Good bat. And I'm ready to win the game. I worked the count to a 2-2. I step in that box staring right back at that pitcher, knowing what was about to happen. He winds up, and I struck out looking. Game over. a boy. That's it? Way to be. <laughs> That's your big little league moment? <laughs> Oh you yeah, just, I played right field. Definitely didn't do much. Ah, uh, uh, see, right—that's that's the thing, Mike. I mean, the right—he still has that love for the game, though. 
Right. You do. I mean, that's the yeah. thing. It, did, it didn't diminish your love for the game, right, Mike? Did not. And here's the thing, Mike, before you go. I mean, we talk about, and I talked about doing this book and, you know, when going through this this whole process of really sort of di- taking a deep dive into why people like baseball or why they don't. But baseball is such a game of failure, a more than a game of failure more than any other sport, right? And this is the the tough thing to power through. You embodied the failure of baseball. Well, I mean, Mike, you you were yes, you embodied the <laughs> failure of baseball, but you powered through. You have to. This is life, man. Like this is life, isn't it? That's life. Playing Speaking right, of which, play Mike, right field. Mike's got a kid right on the way. A couple. Life. Mike, how are we doing, baby? Uh, watch. Oh my goodness. No, he. Is the, now. is the we're, Fenway we're, is the Fenway room going to be ready? Zone. Is the Fenway it's, room going to no, be no, ready? No, no, I don't care about the Fenway. What are you, is, it's is, a great Fenway is, mural. Is your kid? Will your kid? Will you be okay with your kid playing right field? Uh, unless he starts throwing left-handed, yes. Oh, right. oh. left-handed, it's a whole new <laughs> ball game. All right, Mike. Hey, Mike. Thanks for calling, man. Mike, appreciate it. All right. Thanks. All right. Let's go to uh, Russ in Connecticut. What's going on, Russ? Hey, Rob and Coop. How are you? Oh, we're doing great, Russ. Never better. I'm going to bring you back to 1958. I don't I think I can be brought back old. then. I wasn't around, but I'll I'll time travel well, with you. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you. At age 11, I was cut. I tried out the next year, made the team. There we go. And in the championship game that year, I hit two home runs. Wait, you were cut in little league? He's the Michael I Jordan. Was cut. How did how did people no, get cut hey. in little league? Well, you can get cut. It was during the it was during the period when not everybody got a trophy. Ooh, you get okay. that blemish on my generation. So, at any rate, I learned a lesson. The lesson was, and I can still see that big white ball coming over the plate, and I hit two out in a championship game. And what I learned, and this is important. Don't take a no if you think you can do it. Oh, yeah, there you let's go, go Russ. That's what I'm talking about, Russ. That's Pedroia mentality. Let's go. Russ got that dog. All right. <laughs> Russ, you got hey, that dog. Great show. Great, great show. Keep it up, guys. Right, Appreciate Russ. that, Russ. Right. You have a great evening. Yeah. <laughs> let's go. That was awesome. He's yeah. the Michael Jordan of, where was he calling from? Connecticut? Uh, Connecticut. Yeah, yes. he's the Michael Jordan the of, Connecticut. of Connecticut. All right, let's go to Tom and Phil. And what's going on, Tom? Hey Rob, hey Coop, how are you? What's Tommy, up, my boy. Tom? Rob, Rob, one of a side light. One of my memories was I, I almost called you out in a strike three pitch in the uh, in the media game about four years. Oh ago. man, you guys I, are the best. I, I love you. I, 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 I didn't have the heart to do it. <laughs> oh, you should. I mean, everyone knows that. Like, I'm a master of the strike Put him down, like Tom. A sick so dog. you are your 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 senses were keen on that day, but. Tom, I appreciate you doing that. I appreciate you umping. All, all those guys are great guys. I appreciate it. Yeah, well, we have, we have two guys uh, down doing the World Series uh, this year, Mike Orlando from Peabody awesome. and uh, Phil, Phil Levesque from New Hampshire. Uh, Mike will be working the plate, uh, actually, as first base at 11 a.m. tomorrow. And, then uh, and you know what, Tom? Thank you for bringing that up. I mean, that's another thing with Little League that shouldn't go un, un, unrecognized. It's the Little League umps, man. Like, in, in a lot of kids... Brutal. Uh, since the pandemic, I don't know if you've noticed this. I have not. There's been, like, an uptick of people well, just, like, it, shouting at umps. Oh, really? Yeah. Is that yeah, true, nah, Tom? It, ha- it, hasn't, it hasn't been bad. Now, okay. we've had a, I like we've to had a great that. Little League year. I mean, these guys have done probably the last 40, 40 Little League games with no pay. I mean, this is strictly uh. volunteer. Uh, oh. And it, this is at a time where we're real short of umpires yeah. around it. They could be making hundreds of dollars a week, uh, but they made a conscious How decision. How do you, Tom? To, let, let to me, do this. Tom. Let me ask you this: We were talking sure. earlier about the coaches and like the different sort of uh, um, approaches by coaches. What's your vibe in terms of where things are going in that respect? Like, what's the what's the vibe in terms of are, are coaches being overbearing? Are they being too competitive? Are they or are they being understanding that these are moments, important moments for these kids' lives? I I would say the majority is the latter. Uh, we I have not seen a, a whole lot of what I would call bad behavior from um, from uh, from coaches. Uh, this year, and really in the last several years, obviously it's like anything else. So you get a a, gr- a bigger sample. You're going to have a few here and there uh, that are going to act up. But you know what? For the most part, I think they're there for the kids. Uh, you know, when they get to the all star uh, portion of the, of the league, the districts, the sectionals, state, I think they understand 
what it means to the kids and what it means to them and their communities. And uh, now I think for the most part they've, uh, they've done a good job. I, I think what you see on TV uh, – is pretty legitimate, and these uh, these guys really care about. Yeah, it's, it's it's good to have these guys mic'd up, and good to see that. Anything else, Tom? Before we gotta get, get going? Nah, again, just wanted to give the boys a shout out. Shout out, uh, Little League umpires are not. Uh, yeah. It, well, you're regular. Uh, there you go. But to Tom, thanks for calling in. Love that. Yeah. I love the umpire perspective. Yeah. Well, it's good. I mean, like I said, we haven't even thought about that. But I know a lot of kids who are even in high school. Um, certainly in college, who like they get into umpiring that way. Did you ever do that growing up? No, nah, man, I'm, it's tough. I, I don't want to be an umpire. I don't want to be a so referee. Tough. I don't. I don't. I mean, I've, I'm sure I've umpired at some point, but no. Nah, I, I umped in Southie Little League for, Ooh, for a half a season. You got some good stories out of that? No, I don't, because I, I, I wasn't even from Southie. It was just a job at the time. But yeah. it, it was it was actually. But your hard. mom, yeah. not to, not to belabor your mom's job, oh. which we broke that story here on this show. <laughs> yes, we did. Uh, about your mom being a line judge or a judge in tennis. Yeah, she was, she was um, an umpire, too. I mean, so, like, to, you have to have a mindset, and it, it's a completely different personality than I do, to actually have a desire to do that. Like, I don't want to be yelled at by yeah, anybody. I, yeah, it's I, not I, fun. These little, you know, they were little kids, too, and, and whenever I, I called a strike three, I felt awful, you know? Yeah. The kids there, was, so there, was a, there was a situation where there was a kid that legitimately, like, the pitcher couldn't put it over the plate, and this kid, every time that the ball went by, he would drop his bat, but he would drop his bat through the zone. And I'm kind of like, I I have to call this. And at first I wasn't calling it. And then eventually like it got to like three well, balls, bomb, and I was yeah. like, I got I to gotta start calling That's, this those kid. Those are life decisions. Did par- parents started yelling at yeah. me that he wasn't like swinging. I was saying, like, why did I ever do this? Yeah. This is awful. All right, Patrick in Instant Rhode Island. Regret. What's going on, Patrick? How you doing? Good. How are you guys? Good, good. Doing great, Pat. Uh, so... I just got to start off by saying Little League was probably the most fun I ever had playing baseball, as, you know, most people would say. But I got this one story back when it was my final year of Little League, and it was All-Stars. And uh, we were facing the best kid in the district. He, in his town, he had, you know, not even given up an earned run. And uh kid was throwing well into the 70s, you know, like some of these kids do now. And I was a leadoff hitter. I was playing shortstop, and, you know, first pitch threw me a fastball right down the middle. I ripped it into right field, and then this kid just started to unravel. He he walked the next two batters, and then our cleanup hitter twice in this game hit two grand slams off of him. This kid was rattled, and I it was probably the most fun we've ever had. We had thousands of people at the game. You know, Little League Baseball was like – was our town's thing and everyone everyone came out to it so it was just so much fun and then uh and then later in the game after the kid hit two grand slams kid was kind of a head case so he decided to throw a fastball on an intentional walk right at my uh cleanup hitter's head ended up getting ejected from the game and it was just the craziest game i've ever been a part of but you know it's it's, wild patrick how old are you right now i'm 23 yeah i mean even 23 so 20 you know that was why at least like I mean that's that's 12, 10, 13, years, 10, 10 years ago 10 11 years ago but but the thing is is that 10 years from now 20 years from now you know we're going to talk a little bit about our memories coming up but like this is the type of stuff that you never forget this is and this is you talked about it Patrick the most fun that you've ever had in I'm, baseball I'm hearing people talk about like moments and I'll be like oh yeah there was like a situation yeah. where that happened to me and you just like remember like all like the good stuff around that time in your life it's awesome yeah so yeah, pa- and then- yeah, my dad was the coach too, so I always will remember that. That's and another I, dynamic. I Do you want your dad to be the coach? Yeah. Is this a right. question and to me, I, or is this I, the? Yeah. And then I also got to, you know, coach my little brother with my dad. So it's just literally baseball has always been a huge part of my life, and nothing's been better than that. Awesome. So that's all I wanted to. Say. Yeah, no, I appreciate Patrick. that, thanks, Patrick. Thanks for the call. That, that was the spirit of exactly what we're looking for. All right, we got some more callers call, uh, lined up here. 617-779-7937. we got to take a quick break. we got the pregame show coming up near the top of the hour. So we got to cruise through this along with, of course, getting to our own recollections of, of Little League. And also, I want to make it – I really want to make it clear that, like, you're going to want to listen to the pregame show today because both Will it's Fleming – Well, both Will Fleming and Will – and what we can do, you and I in the pregame show, continue this conversation. Maybe that's when we can talk about our own little thing. Um, but – but both Will Fleming and Ian Brown have been observing this all day down in Williamsport. We've seen the video on Twitter, so uh, it's it's uh, it'll be a pregame show you want to get to. But in the meantime, we're taking your calls. This is the Bradford Show. I'm Rob Bradford. That's Coop Jackson behind the glass. Be back after this. 
You're listening to The Bradfoe Show on Boston Sports Original, WEEI. Oh, excellent job, Jackson. Excellent job. Guns N' Roses. Oh, yeah. Yesterday's. We got got that. Excellent job. Reflecting on our own days. And it's perfectly timed because this is a Little League hour. Everyone stepped up to the plate and done an awesome job. Giving uh, giving this hour exactly what we want, which is memories, importance of Little League, and all of it leading into the pregame show, leading into the game. All of that will be from Williamsport, Pennsylvania. That's where the Red Sox are taking on the Orioles. We've already seen a lot of tweets about the players, and I think for the players it's also like, like oh, yes, the great game of baseball. We don't have to deal with all the nonsense. Just getting back to their roots, Coop. Just getting back to the, the bread and butter of the baseball. The bread and butter of baseball. I'm Rob Bradford. That's Coop. Jack's me on the glass. We're going to crank through these calls because we do have the aforementioned pregame show coming up. John and Gardner, what's going on, John? How are you doing today? I am doing well. Hey, I submit for your perusal, uh, Rob. Action Jackson. And Coop, you got a strong back, brother? A strong back? Yeah, I got decent. I, I don't really deadlift Bob is going to be riding you hard now that Brian's going oh, high. Phrasing yeah, on that. Yeah, yeah, phrasing. Yeah, yeah they, listen, I mean, yeah, uh, anybody, I have... anyone knows that, like, Coop's podcast ability, and he's the commissioner of the Bradford Show Fantasy Football League, so he's... Uh, his, That's giving you reasons to get on. Yeah, man. his docket is full, my friend. What's going on, John? So, so I was that 12-year-old in 67 that watched uh, the Rich Rollins pop up on my mother's black and white TV. Anyway, that was the year I made the Little League All-Star team. But I wasn't going to call until you talked about getting cut. I was born in literally in the heart of the baby boomer era. Rare usage of that word correctly. Um, there were so many. I grew up in Natick. There were so many kids. They had the Little League, and then they had the Farm League, which they had three Farm Leagues. I have an easy way for you to score some extra cash and find money you didn't know you had. You can use that found money for fun things like sports or concert tickets, dining out, paying off bills. Whatever it is, it's always awesome to find money. It only takes a minute to check your name or your friends and family's names. Go to findmassmoney.com and see if you have unclaimed property. And if you haven't checked in a few months, well, go now and look. They are constantly updating the list. Findmassmoney.com. It's fast, easy, and free. In the wee hours of the night, when everyone else is fast asleep, you're the one on third shift, burning the midnight oil. When a part fails and everything comes to a grinding halt, regardless of what the clock on the wall says, you leap into action. Granger is with you and all the ones who get it done. With 24-7 customer support by phone or click to chat. Call, click Granger.com, or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. Hey everyone, it's Kenny Main, the host of Hey Main, the Kenny Main Talks to Famous People podcast. Made a list of people we thought would say yes, and most of them did. Not going to call out the others who didn't. Actually, what the others do mainly is don't answer. So not really saying no. So really, our potential audience for guests and for listening audience is the whole planet. No one really has said no. So we want you to find it on the Odyssey app or wherever you get your podcasts. You know those headlines that make you stop scrolling and actually read an article? I'm Mike Rogers. Those are the kinds of stories I'm diving into on my podcast, Something Offbeat. Like the caterpillar infestation in Maine that had us rethinking our relationship with insects. We were talking about a time 300 million years ago, if you can imagine. There was a dragonfly. It had a two-foot wingspan. Just search for Something Offbeat in the Odyssey app or wherever you get your podcasts. How's your mental health? I'm listening with Jewel. One day I was in a dressing room trying to steal a dress and I was like, I'm a statistic. I'm homeless, I'm stealing. Then I realized if I don't change something, I'm gonna end up in jail or dead. And I remember this quote that was attributed to Buddha that said, happiness doesn't depend on who you are or what you have, it depends on what you think. And so I decided to see if I could turn my life around one thought at a time. More at imlistening.org. Talk saves lives. Little League team. I was blocked by all these kids that were the same age. So when I was nine, when I was 10, when I was 11, I was blocked. I got up to the uh, Little League because it was an expansion. But two life lessons I learned from Mr. Hall. Well, one from Mr. Hall. He was the gruff coach that lived down the street from me. I pitched a couple of no hitters in Farm League, you know, when I was 11. And I thought I was the stuff, you know what I mean? Mm. So I batted third or fourth and I pitched most of the games. 
So we're playing a game at Lincoln Field. He call, starts calling out the lineup. I'm not batting third. I'm not batting fourth. I'm not batting fifth. Somebody else is pitching. I'm like, what the? And then at the end, he goes, Smith, right field. My name isn't Smith, but he, he put me in right field batting ninth. Ooh. And he taught me a lesson. He taught me a lesson about not that getting is the big. ultimate flew, lesson. flew too close to the that sun. That is the ultimate lesson. Right field ninth. And real quick, Rob, I also my mother raised nine of us by herself. I remember her walking home with me from Whitney Field from the Little League All Star game because she found a way to do that kind of stuff. Oh, even with nine yeah. of us. God bless. Yeah, hey, John, John, thanks for the call, and also thanks for reminding. You know, we talked about the umpires, we talked about the players, the coaches, also the parents. I mean. Like I, so my parents obviously they're great, and Bill and Bonnie Bradford in 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 Essex, Massachusetts. One of the things that you have to do as a little league parent is you have to weather like these little midgey flies. Like it's right by the marsh. Say that word again for me. Midgey flies. Okay. Yeah, I've never heard that. Okay, before. well was... these little natty things, and it's right by the marsh. So as the as the game goes on, it's like oh these things get brutal. But parents have to weather these things. I mean, this is like you. But in, you coastal elites. Uh, well, oh, we had a we had to worry about these. I know, I know. These bugs by the marshes of our, bu- our beachfront estates. I'm trying to build up my parents. <laughs> Leave me alone. I'm I'm tearing down you. I'm not. I'm yeah, building them you're up. You're tearing me down. They did a great job. Yes, making exactly. a, a base, a supportive and, base for anyway, you. To all the parents out there who you know they show up, and even when they know that their kid is going to hit ninth and hit being right field, it's that one moment. And really, like I had, you know. <laughs> my my son wasn't great at baseball, but he just had he had a one moment type of game in a playoff game, and that was the thing the the look on your face it's it's the look on the kid's face, the look on the parent face, and that's all it takes. You don't have to be great, you don't have to be fantastic, but if you have that one moment, whether it's as we had the caller call in before the 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 son who was pitching for that one time, anything. Look at you. What are you saying? No, Jackson just put in some fly noises. That was pretty good. But it was in the middle of you romanticizing don't about ever, your relationship with your yeah, son. Yeah, yeah. So it was like perfect timing. I love it. Jackson, you just... were pitching a perfect game up until then. No, 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 point. Jackson. Keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> I was like, Bob, on Bob in the car. What's going on, Bob? How you doing, Bob? What's going on? I do. How you doing, guys? I just want you know, I live on the along the Marsh and Riviera, and those little flies there are ridiculous. It's like it's such a pain in the ass. Yeah, yeah so you know what Try I'm living in the cranberry bogs in South Shore. What's going on, Bob? <laughs> but, but but anyways, I grew up I grew up in Malden and I played for Malden Little League and uh, I come from a big family. We, there was like nine of us, ten of us. I forget I, I forget how much there was so many of us. Um, but I was eight years old and my brother Jeff, my second oldest brother, was about maybe twenty twenty one years old. I'm not exactly sure, but he started um, umpiring for Little League. So now it's the first game, and guess who's on team? He's umpiring. It's mine. So anyways. Game's going on, bump up the middle of the game. I forget what inning it was. But anyways, you know, I'm up, I'm leading off. And I think it was a third of the fourth inning. But um, so all of a sudden he goes, okay, you're ready to go. And the pitcher throws the ball. And I hit this ball, like, I mean, like, I could never hit a ball at my age of 57 right now that far. Right? It turned out it was her last um, warm-up pitch. My brother <laughs> cut me into the box early. So I was so <laughs> I to go back in there, and I struck out. <laughs> oh. And that boy grew up to be yeah, Joe yeah, West. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you right now that that that, is, that that story comes up every Thanksgiving and every opening day. <laughs> that's <laughs> awesome, Bob. Th- th- thanks uh, for the call, guys. Quality, quality, bro- man, quality that's, brother that's, shenanigans. Give me a favor, guys. Real yeah. quick, real quick. You got to do this little league stuff a little bit more. I think it's it's, it's a good I love it. The game. Yeah, I, I think it's awesome because now you, you're getting you're getting um. Uh, older guys and uh, middle-aged guys and guys who think they're still young calling in. I think it's a well. What's uh, What's it's, amazing, it's, Bob, it's is it is it's, again? There's the stories that are passed down from you know whether it's two years out, five years out, ten years out, whatever. And, and as we know that the exaggerations get bigger and bigger and bigger, but it doesn't make a difference. I mean, these are this is. Like, this is the meat. And, this is the meat and potatoes. When we talk about the Bradford Show, we talk about baseball all the live long day, right? But this is the meat and potatoes of what we're talking about. Right, we we can only it's talk. It's, it's a it's a break from the contract talk. It's society building. Right. That's what we're talking about. Yeah. If you want to get it, if you want to get into it, little league baseball but helps with building also, society. Let me just check that hang up real quick. But it's also like, I would say you know over ninety percent of everybody has a little league memory. You know whether it was good, bad, or indifferent. Everybody played it at least one season, or they were great all stars AAU or whatever. But baseball, 
Everybody has a baseball memory. It is true. It's true. Bob, thanks and you know what? Everyone can relate to it, too. Like, you can, thanks, you can really guys. empathize with, guys. like, what other people are talking about because more often than not, you, you had some type of Little League experience like that, and that's, like, an well, instant, like, all right, where can we, like, build this conversation and, and off of now? Let's, We're let's, not let's so be different. Honest. Let's be honest. Like, a parent, the parent checklist is get kid to play at least one year of Little League, right? That's the parental checklist. There was, as Bob points out, not a lot of kids, no matter athletic, non-athletic, whatever, don't at least dabble in Little League. That's true. Like yeah. when you like T-ball up until probably that first year of like pit like kids throwing on their own. And then you see if it takes Almost or not. Everyone you see if it takes or not. But even for the ones that don't take, that one year we get the good stories that are passed on from from bar to bar to bar to bar. Did you to ever bar. do opening day? Did your town do that? Uh, no, we didn't. Uh, opening now. Well, oh. I mean, I didn't. No, so my town did for my and everything. kids. My kids did. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, so that's part of the, the yeah, trophy, uh, the candy, yeah, the participation yeah. trophy yeah, yeah, generation. Yeah, no, 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 we just was like, like, let's roll it out. Yeah. It's, it's game time. Season right. starting. All right, Tim and Hanover. What's going on, Tim? Gentlemen, I love the show. This is phenomenal. I uh, call all the time. I just want to say I was younger, playing Little League, a good athlete. I wound up going in a snow pocket trying out but I was trying out for my brother. I was catching everything, hitting everything. The coaches were taking my names, and then my coach came up to me that I played for and says, what's your name, son? And I told him my brother's name. And he goes, oh, you have a brother that plays, right? And then he said, hey, do, do me a favor. Tell, him that, uh, tell your brother that I said hi, and that's that. But I just want to say, long story short, I've always parent laughed trap. about it for years and years. But here's what it is. I think the coaches are awesome. I've worked, I've coached for 13 years, and I always wanted to give back to kids for what I was given when I was younger, and I really appreciated it. And I coached four kids that made it to the NFL, believe it or not. Ooh. And I stopped at high school. Yeah, no kidding. Can we name but names, I, or are we keeping every, that? I got every benefit out of it. Every are, benefit. Can we get names out of those guys, or do we keep that close to the chest? Oh, one of them was, yeah, one of them uh one of them was the number one running back. I, I moved to California, lived in California for 30 years. Yeah, We don't, and, we don't have uh, running backs coming out of Massachusetts. Shot. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but my kid played D2 ball. But, he did very good. All right, Tim, well, thanks for the call, man. I really appreciate it. Appreciate the All kind right, words. we got to get to this. All right, thanks. All right, let's go to uh, Jake in Newport, Rhode Island. What's going on, Jake? Hey, Rob, thanks for taking the call. Um, wanted to um, – memorialize one of the greatest Little League coaches ever, Mr. Mack, who coached, uh, owns r r Construction and coached at various levels down here in Newport and Fifth Ward Little League, Babe Ruth, American Legion. Uh, he was a wonderful coach, uh, left a tremendous legacy in this community, uh, and, and his kids continue to be a part of that coaching uh, their own kids and continuing that. And Jake, uh, I learned and Jake- a lot about life. No, go well, Jake. I was just gonna say, like, I'll let you go on in a second, but I'm glad you brought up someone like that, and and I'm glad you had the opportunity to sort of highlight him as well, because we see, you know, we see coaches who are parents, and it's easy, not easy, but it's it's not more natural when you have a coach who's a parent and you want to be around your kid, and then you have the coach who maybe starts as a parent and sticks around over and over and over and leaves the imprint and leaves like the the the, 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 the impact that what you're talking about what, as they get get way way past having a kid in little league and that I think says a lot. No, and that's exactly who this was. Um, you know, continued to give both time and money. It's an expensive thing to sponsor teams, and he, he sponsored multiple teams throughout every season in all, across these different age levels uh, and continued to be a part of the program well after his kids were out of it. Um, I, I enjoyed my time playing for him. Uh, I went on to coach after I left the Little League and coached with him for a couple, uh, you know, lifelong memory for me that I'm able to kind of continue that on, and, and I wouldn't have been able to do that without him. It's oh. awesome, Jake. You, you When you made that transition of, like, playing the game to coaching it, was that an awesome feeling? Because I, I had that recently when I went from, you know, finishing up college baseball, club baseball, but going out and, like, being able to kind of pass along, like, the things that you love about the game and what made you appreciate it, I mean, incredible moment. Yeah, I, I, my memories of those days as a younger kid doing that are a little fuzzy, I'll be honest. But uh, I enjoy coaching now as an adult. 
Uh, I've coached my daughter all the way through rec and, and actually have graduated to being able to coach JV uh, at the high school this last year. And, and I, I do, I love every minute of it. I try and make it fun. Uh, you've got some kids on the team who have never played before, so you're teaching some fundamental skills, um, trying to get everybody into the game so they get the experience and the com- competition experience, not just the practice experience. Um, and then working with some, some very talented kids who hopefully will go somewhere and be able to play at the next level in college uh, and trying to tailor the coaching experience to that various levels. It, it's hard. Um, but I, I go back to those memories and the things that I learned at a, as a young kid about the, the sportsmanship and being um, – it's not just about winning or losing. It's about how you play. And I know that seems like a very stereotypical thing to say, but uh, we learned that, and, and that's a legacy that this coach left in this community. Jake, thanks so much for calling. I appreciate it. You know, it, here's my advice for, for coaches. Let's who, hear it. For, for coaches of, of kids who may not be able to play or you're going to have a crappy baseball team. Mail it Don't in. worry about hitting. Oh, okay. Don't worry about it. Just find someone who can throw the ball over the plate and, most importantly, hit a million ground balls. Teach them all the bunt. You No. You can't, give up, you can't give up extra can outs. You imagine, can you imagine, like, if you're just like a coach and you're like – my team is well, booty. Like my team is so bad. I'm just going to teach well, them all gonna, to bunt, catch that and, ball, just put it right in front of the plate. In the pregame show, which is coming up next, yep. we're going to talk a little bit. You and I are going to continue this little league conversation because the Red Sox are playing in Williamsport, and we're going to talk to Will Fleming. We're going to talk to Ian Brown there. And spoiler alert: part of that is we're going to talk about what our own in small ball. Well, I was the ultimate small ball guy. Small ball is the best. Oh, yeah. That's why I like chorus. So and, of course, you have a number. You pick your number based on a player, right? I guess, yeah. Why? Who is your number? Oh, 15. Oh, yeah, 15. Yeah. Exactly. You, you, and you get a chance to tell that person, Dustin Bedroya, that you picked number 15. Yeah, I only creeped him out a little bit. Just a little bit. I also told my guy. Who was your guy? Jerry Remy. Oh, uh, number two. Number two? Yeah, yeah. You used to take number two? Yeah, number two. All right. Pre-game show is coming up. It's been a fun show, man. I'm not even lying. It's been a fun show. You can catch the entire show, segmented, all of the Bradfo Show podcast. Bradfo Show podcast. Listen, subscribe, rate, review. It's red hot. Jackson, you pitched the perfect game. Oh, Jackson, thank you, sir. Incredible job. Incredible Looking job. Looking handsome back there. Looking handsome. On the mic. All right. Well, awesome. I'm trying. Hey, my, real quick. My last Little League experience was getting picked off at first base in the championship game to lose. Oh. Atta boy. Yep. There you Atta go. Atta boy. Atta boy. Way to carry the team. You landed here. Excellent job. <laughs> All right.